Okay, welcome back. Uh, in this video, now that we've got the control horns uh, and the clevises together, we want to center the servos. Uh, by the way, in the previous video, you should have had um, extra four of these uh, little uh, silicone uh, uh, tubes that uh, are extra, and you should have two extra screws and a mine plug. Okay. You won't need any of that uh, for right now. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take the battery that came with the airplane and test it. Uh, I use an E-Flight uh, uh, voltage checker. Okay, and there's a number one on the voltage checker, and you got a black wire on the on the uh, um, this connector. So you got a black wire and the number one pin on the uh, voltage checker. And so you put the number one uh, pin where the black wire is and light it up. And it'll tell you that the voltage is 11.7. And the three uh, cells are 3.9, 3.88, and 3.9. Okay, so that's a standard maintenance charge or storage charge for a three cell battery. And... Uh, and just for centering these servos, that's good enough. We don't need to charge it yet. Uh, I will charge it uh, uh, later, but this will be good enough to um, center the servos. So um, we don't need this mine plug or uh, anything. So I'm gonna put the airplane on its side here and plug in the battery. Uh, I'm not gonna plug in the battery. I'm gonna open the battery hatch actually. I can leave the battery hatch off because we're not going flying yet. I'm getting the uh, uh, Velcro out of the way and I'm going to um, put this sort of right in the center of the um, battery hatch. Okay. And just secure it with Velcro. I'm not worried about it flying yet. All I want to do is hold it in there. Uh, there's enough room to move that back and forth, and we'll probably put some Velcro on the battery later. Um, but I just want to hold it in place. So now, um, um, I'm gonna, before I turn on the uh, transmitter, I'm going to make, make sure of a couple things. One, that the throttle is all the way back. And back here, you have what's called a um, motor throttle arm disarm. So it's a throttle cut switch is what, what I call it. And so it's in the arm position right now, which is, if you're looking at it, it's down. So I'm going to flip it up. So it's in the disarm position. So what that does was when we turn the radio on and we plug this in, we're certain that the prop won't move. Okay. So now that that's ready, I'm going to turn the radio on first before we plug in the battery. Oh, okay, <laughs> I'll be right back. I forgot to put the batteries in the transmitter. I'll be right back. Okay, I now have batteries in, in the transmitter. That helps. Okay, so we're going to turn it on. And the orange light lights up means it's on. Remember this uh, throttle cut switch is in the disarm position. And the throttle is all the way back. Everything else is centered. And so now we're going to plug in the airplane. Okay, you can hear it going through all these gyrations here, and that's the AS3X. And you notice that after I plugged it in, I uh, turned the wheels down, because it wants to be wheels down for the AS3X to, just, to initialize. Okay, so now that that's initialized, uh, I'm not going to touch the throttle, because I don't want to arm anything. I don't want to, I don't want to arm, remember the ESC, I don't, uh, the AS3X, I'm sorry, the AS3X doesn't get armed until you actually move that throttle forward, so I'm not doing that. All I care about is that these arms are centered, and so when we look at the airplane, and look at the nice smiley face on the front of the airplane here with a nice smile here and the two eyes, and the, the um, 
note, whoops, the nose wheel is, uh, um, uh, let's see, the nose wheel is straight. I guess I should have put that uh, Velcro in a little tighter. Okay, so now that, all right, that Velcro is now a little tighter, and that's why you want to put Velcro on the battery, and I'll show you that later. So now that that's centered, the servos are centered, I want to check to see how the tail feathers here are straight or not. Okay, so I must check the rudder first, and um, you can see that the rudder is off this way a little bit. So we need to turn this to get that uh, straight. So I'll do that in just a minute. And uh, by uh, making sure this battery doesn't fall out again. Um, turn this. Okay. And I'm going to open the clevis for the rudder. And it, the rudder needs to go that way. And so that means I got to screw the clevis out. Okay. So I'm going to undo the clevis with my uh, screwdriver. Okay. And turn the clevis by hand. One and a half turns. We'll see how one and a half turns does. Okay. Actually, that's two turns. I've decided we'll try two turns here. So I'm just going to try it back in the clevis and see if the rudder looks straight. And not straight enough yet. So it's going to have to be out a little more. So let me open the clevis up. Turn it out another full turn. One, two. Okay. Two half turns equals one full turn. Okay. Put the clevis back in the control horn, close it, and um, let's see. Let me move the rudder a little bit here. Nope, not still not enough. Uh, I'm going to stop the camera a second, make sure everything's all right, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to use a tool that I have. This is a tool that you can buy that uh, uh, actually helps you turn a clevis. And I'm going to hold the uh, push rod and turn the clevis uh, half a turn, another half a turn, one and a half turns, and we'll see if one and a half turns does it. Let's see here. Nope, that was too much. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me back this clevis back in. And you got to make sure that the clevis is um, vertical. Okay, so it, it's, uh, with this tool, it's much easier to do. That's why I went and got it. It's uh, easier if this clevis is vertical. There we go. And so now we'll try it. And in the outermost hole. And it's still a little too much. So uh, it went too far. That's all right. Take your time and get it right. quite vertical.
this will uh, make sure that the first flight goes very well because uh, these airplanes are built so that no, not, still not enough obviously I went too far in the last time and now I'm got to uh, get it right Now your airplane might be just perfect the first time. This one is off enough that uh, uh, I got to make it right. Move the rudder. It's not to my liking, so I'm going to get it to my liking. Um, I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, I'm back, and uh, I've got the rudder uh, adjusted the way I like it. Uh, the rudder is very important, and I want it to be nice and straight. The elevator um, is good in that it's just ever so slightly up. I don't want it down because you always want a, a little bit of up elevator uh, typically uh, when you fly these airplanes. Now on the first flight we'll trim this and then readjust these as, as necessary. But uh, now that the uh, uh, elevator and rudder are mechanically adjusted correctly. Okay as a reminder uh, don't forget now that the uh, uh, everything is centered and the uh, control horns are all locked in place you got to do two more things. Move these um, uh, fuel tubings up to the front of the uh, clevis like that and don't get it too close that it might touch but you just need to get it up far enough for that to uh, be um, locked in place so the clevis doesn't come open on both sides you got to move it up far enough that they're not in place and then the last thing is remember we only did a finger tight on these two screws now it's time to crank it down and I've already done that okay so thank you for watching stay tuned for the next video